Oh no, the internet's most favourite cook is back. Yeah, the sauce that feels like you're going to catch an illness just by looking at it being consumed. Well, unfortunately, this sketchy looking sauce that we're all beginning to forget is nothing but a bad dream is back. Or, more accurately, the creator for this monstrosity. And she's hungry for revenge after people not taking too kindly to a business selling sketchy looking sauce with inaccurate labels and the FDA staying to stay away. Who would have thought making your own sauce in your garage would lead to health concerns? Anyway, if you don't know what pink sauce is, it's pretty self-explanatory. But I'll show you a quick little video. I said I want something big. I want something that says I'm here. Beyonce. <laughs> Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. She is advertising that she makes this special sauce with a criminal amount of sunflower oil. Anyway, the point of this video is not to just show you about the pink sauce. You already know about that. It's to show you what she's doing now. She has decided to try to revive her career, to go on a talk show, and played the victim card. She's basically claiming the reason why her pink sauce never took off isn't because of people's concerns for their health, it's because she's a woman. But before we watch this hilarious interview, make sure you're subscribed, please. Self-esteem and self-worth is directly reflective of how many people click that button. So please, for the love of God, click that button because 0.2% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed and it makes me cry every morning. Anyway, without any further ado, here's the interview. Thousands, if not millions of people use social media as a financial resource, a way to support themselves, which is great. But one mistake on social media when running a business could cost you more than you think. That's exactly what happened to my neighbor. Well, I think it's pretty obvious why she went on this show. Off the bat, you can literally see the bias here. Also, small business owner that's made a small mistake. A small mistake which have cost many people their health and I've left a few in hospital. Regardless if all the jokes and claims are true, all these mistakes are on her. She presented as a small business owner, which is evidently not true. She's probably made more off this pink sauce than these people that have made this interview are gonna make in the next month. Well, tell me about the pink sauce. What inspired that? Between the years of 2018 and 2020, I battled with anxiety. <laughs> what? I don't know if she just doesn't understand the question, or is she going for the sympathy card right off the bat? No, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having anxiety. I'm just saying that it's not really relevant, is it? It just makes no sense. Dragon fruit to build the levels of magnesium in my body. Mm -hmm. That's how I became fond of the coloring of the red dragon fruit. <laughs> what is she on about? Alright, so she had a magnesium deficiency. So she likes the colour pink? Those two things have no correlation. Why is, what? This isn't even me trying to make something out of nothing. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. Our own business, big up, okay? Thank you. Because that is powerful. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, and thank you, have, you. you. We have a world that tells you that you're not able to pursue these things, you're not able to do these things, so big up. Yes. But when it comes to the pink sauce, do you think you rushed the business a little bit? Because it sounded like you, you was like, oh, I want to do this. I, I like fruit. Okay, cute. I don't, I didn't really hear a lot of planning there. What is this guy on about? How would he know if she thought about a business idea before doing it? Second of all, why does he care? To be fair, I can see where it's coming from. She did rush the business from the looks of it, which has caused a lot of people to be ill. Which, you know, is not what you want to do with your business reputation. I doubt it was her intention to make anyone ill. But at the end of the day, as the business owner, it's your responsibility to ensure that your product isn't rushed and isn't going to make people sick. That's sort of like the bare minimum. Because I need to know, when did you start receiving the backlash and what was that backlash saying? Okay, so there was a young lady on social media. She took it as the moment to say, hey, this is my moment to become viral. And that is what happened. She became viral from posting that video. So what I find quite interesting here is she's deliberately dodging what the video is actually about, which for your information, it's basically just slandering her product and giving an honest review that is really bad. Also, I'm not gonna lie, her fit is very distracting. She's got a pink blazer and it looks like she's put a little bit of the pink sauce in her hair. Which I guess is like a walking advertisement. It might not be fit for human consumption, but you can use it as hair dye. So, I mean, it was so bad, even down to someone lying about their own death. I mean, it was just horrible. And my son saw that video mm -hmm. first. I walked in the door and just see my son laying on the floor like, did my mom kill somebody? Oh my God. You know? And that was all in the backlash from people getting all online. I mean, it's funny as some of the jokes about the pink sauce are, you shouldn't say you fake your own death. Because to be honest, she could probably see you for defamation. 
Also, if you do do that, you're just being a bit of a dick. At the end of the day, as scuffed as it is, she is actually a business trying to make money, and doing false claims like that are actually very detrimental. However, I don't think that excuses her for this terrible excuse for a product. However, what she's saying here doesn't really have any relevance to what she's supposed to be talking about. I feel like she's just adding this stuff in for the shock factor and for a little bit of pity. Every business is going to have people mocking. However, you've got to move past this and not bring it up as a point to get pity on a TV interview. So this one mistake of packaging with your pink sauce yes. turned into people creating exaggerated stories about your product, about everything that's going on. Yes, under 50 orders. And it just blew up with negativity. Yes. I am sorry, but I refuse to believe only 50 orders were packed like this. 90% of the people who received their pink sauces. If your product always came packaged good, then fair enough, you can be a bit annoyed that people were taking the mick out of your packaging. However, it's not really your place to say what people can or cannot say about your product, especially if it's already had some orders that have come like that. You then can't tell people they can't mock you for the packaging. It's just quite funny because she doesn't seem to have much idea or clue what she's doing as a business owner. Are you so passionate about the pink sauce? Because it's me. Oh, my bad. I take it all back. What does that even mean? What? She's inside the pink sauce? Is a little bit of her soul trapped in each bottle. Is she just this invested in her business? She's just become a part of the pink sauce. That's why all her clothes are pink. She slowly becomes more pink. The more water she sells. Mm -hmm. It's my legacy. Um, I'm literally trapped inside each bottle. Uh, the foundation for my children, for everyone around me, for growth. And, you know, I'm raising two young men. And this simple mistake, like, I tell them, Making a mistake sometimes can be, you know, detrimental. Yeah, that is sort of how businesses work. If I had a watch company and I just decided that I didn't want to deliver watches one day, but I wanted to keep all the money, it's sort of understandable why that would be detrimental to my business. As the cunning business mind yourself, I understand how you have to explain that to us mere mortals. Um, or it can impact you tremendously. And I feel like I'm leading an inspiration to them you can do whatever you want to do. You know, you put your mind to that. If you want to sell sketchy, disgusting sauce in a bottle, just like your mum, just remember, you can do that too. I know this is supposed to be like a heartwarming moment, but it's just really not. How on earth is selling people an absolute scam, just some disgusting pink sauce, which you don't even know what's in it and you don't care if it makes people ill. How is that a life lesson to teach your kids? And you do that. You All right, in this part, she's getting a little bit depressed, so I'm going to skip this bit. Am I going to die? Is it safe? I would be so interested to sending this to a food safety um, testing lab, and I think it's like $300. I'm willing to send this to be tested. Now, before we go any further, I do have to ask this, Allie, because my producers did tell me that the reason that we had to separate the couches is because you didn't feel comfortable in sitting next to Chef Pete. Yeah, I that? just, I feel like I haven't met her yet and just kind of the last line of her saying that I harassed her just didn't make me, un made me uncomfortable because I never set out to harass anybody. And okay. I think that's like a little bit delusional to say something. Chef B is actually getting flamed. It's been 30 seconds into the interview and she's already got called delusional. Tell me from your perspective, she says that she says that she didn't harass you. I think it's delusional to send a sample to a laboratory after you stuck your finger in it. <laughs> what? I just... I, I think I've had it. When you taste the Chef P sauce, you did the viral video, which yep. everyone does those. People did their taste tests. Yep. But you then went further. Yep. Tell me what you then did. So I saw it and I was like, wow, this is such a cool sauce. It's bright pink, like I'm a sauce girl. So when I was doing the review, there was just so many red flags that I saw in it. Like the label, you know, when you make a USDA label, you have to put in batch numbers because if something were to be recalled, you have to be able to trace it down to the salt and pepper that is in something. Let's go. They finally got someone on the show with a mental age over 12. She actually knows what she's on about, to be fair. She has a very big vendetta against this sauce. To be fair, there's nothing else I can add here. Not, I haven't already said. So if something- oh, wait, not to cut, not to cut you off, but to cut you off. <laughs> What? Not to cut you off, but to cut you off. But okay, no, I, I've, I've had. We're skipping over that. You didn't see the video because you follow me, right? Well, I want to hear Ali. I'm yeah, give absolutely. You, a you to had see. your time okay. to talk, so just let me have mine. Um, so I understand, like, if it does have dairy in it, 
You see all these concerns. You saw my TikTok. I follow you. You have my address, my phone number, my email. If once I posted my original video, if you wanted to make things right, as a business owner, when you create a product, that's your pride and joy. You send it off to someone, they don't like it. You're like, oh my gosh, like that's my pride and so joy. Let me fix it. Weren't? I mean, up to here, I've agreed with 90% of what she said. I get what she's saying here, but I think what she's saying isn't actually right. If you make a product as a business owner, you shouldn't have to dwell on every single person who hates it, but at the same time, you should listen to the general consensus. So again, I get what she's saying, but, you know, I think she's just trying a little bit too hard now. Contacted by no, Chef P. And, and the thing is, if you knew I had a problem with it, you could have contacted me and I could have turned around. And I'm not a hateful person. I could have been like, wow, Chef P contacted so me. So you're saying that you contacted me. No, I'm saying you I didn't never contacted received... me. Okay, but why would I contact someone who's fabricating something on the but internet? nothing you're, was fabricated. To be honest, you're not special. You're not special. <laughs> This lady's actually brain dead. You're not special. That's a great way to treat your customers. I watched a Cheetos video on this. I think his analogy for this is perfect. Imagine me like an Amazon customer support person and someone says that they're not happy with the product. So you just tell them they're not special. Okay, so why should I lose my mind and approach you directly when you're fabricating something on the well, internet? Well, so I, will, I will say this because I want to hear both of your sides. I will say this. As... Chef P, as a businesswoman, no matter what someone reviews your products, unfortunately, everyone is special to you because that's going to be your business. With that, I'm going to end the video because I've gone completely brain dead watching this and I cannot bear to waste one more minute of my life watching this. Absolute just rubbish. Thanks everyone who's been supporting me recently. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to end my pain and suffering. And see you boys next time.